I'm Dana Denha, and you're watching FYI. During school hours, kids learn a lot about how to be successful in the real world. But one after-school organization has been teaching kids life lessons and how to care for animals in the process. For over a century, 4-H has been in the business of molding youngsters into responsible adults. 4-H's stand for Head, Heart, Hands, and Health. Head is the idea that you can learn more and be a clear thinker. Heart is that you care for people. Hands are that you use your hands to do service for other people. And then better living so that you can take care of yourself so that you can do all of those other things and live a good, healthy life. Being in 4-H made me a very hard worker. It made me kind of accountable for what I was responsible for. You know, every single day I'd get up in the morning, I'd get my goats and my lambs, I'd take them on walks and I'd exercise them. And then as soon as I was done with that, I'd get my horse out, I'd ride my horse, and then I'd do it all over again that evening. The culmination of a year in 4-H ends with a week-long show run by the 5 to 19-year-olds that make up the club. It's a nice way to showcase the work, showcase the projects, showcase crafts, showcase animals that they have been working with and training. Because you don't just have a pig in the barn, but you go out and you, you work with the pig so the pig gets to know you. We're unique because we're all about the youth. They get to show off all of their hard work that they've had on either their livestock or their still projects. We have a animal decorator class today where you bring your animal in and dress them up in some way and the kids dress up. The kids dress up as an animal and the animal dresses up as a person. That's what 4-H is all about, working together and building those skills. Mark your calendar for the 2022 4-H Youth Show, the week of July 24th through the 30th. Stay tuned, and we'll be back with more in exactly 30 seconds. Monarchs have been fighting for their lives for years, with the population declining at a rapid rate. A couple of Ann Arbor institutions are swooping to the rescue to give these butterflies a fighting chance. The city of Ann Arbor's golf courses can now add Butterfly Sanctuary to their list of accomplishments. The Monarchs in the Rough program is a great initiative to create awareness um, for the decline of the butterfly population. What's amazing is it's only been happening since like 1999 that the, the population has declined by 80, 90 percent. The idea is to bring the golf course into play and they can donate uh, open areas to be able to establish the landscape that the butterflies need to be able to sustain. The monarchs are a huge asset to the environment and it's the milkweed plant that's that lone plant that they need to lay their eggs on and that they eat when they're young. So it's, it's a very important plant, the milkweed. The monarch is a very important species for pollinators, for the environment, and they're in trouble, and we're trying to help. There's been an increased population of bum, uh, bumblebees, uh, bees, wasps, that are basically also benef benef uh, benefiting from the, the natural areas, it's not just about, about monarchs. One of my favorite old Chinese proverbs is the best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago. The second best time is now. I want someone to look back and say, wow, what these folks started 30 years ago has really helped where we are today. Composting in Ann Arbor is perpetually evolving. Every year, new guidelines are made to the program. Learn about the benefits of composting in this month's City Roundup in 60. Hi, I'm Jenny Petoskey, the 
City Solid Waste Outreach and Compliance Specialist, and I'm going to talk about compost. Household trash in Michigan is 30 to 40 percent organic matter. In landfills, these materials are required to be covered, which reduces the amount of oxygen. If there is no oxygen, the organic matter decomposes very slowly and produces methane, a much more potent greenhouse gas than carbon dioxide. There's value in that organic matter. If we compost it and put it back onto the land, it builds soil structure, replaces nutrients, sequesters carbon, and helps the land hold on to water. The City of Ann Arbor offers curbside compost collection for all single-family homes. Multi-family homes and non-commercial entities may also be eligible depending on location and the ability of the trucks to access carts. To opt into the program or see if you are eligible, call customer service at 99Green. The first compost cart is free, picked up. Did you know that all food scraps can go into your compost cart? This includes things you cannot put in a backyard composter, including meat, dairy, bread, and bones. Composting is a way to participate in the circular economy, and it builds value in materials in your community, including resilience and health. To learn more, visit a2gov.org slash compost and a2gov.org slash circular economy, all one word. After a two-year hiatus due to the pandemic, Ann Arbor's premier car show is back and ready to show off the artistry of the automotive industry. The Rolling Sculpture Car Show is one of the highlights of summer in the city, with hundreds of exotic, classic, and one-of-a-kind cars taking over the downtown. Joining me is Ben Coleman, Chairman, and Jeff DeBoer, Volunteer Coordinator for the Rolling Sculpture Car Show. Welcome to the show, guys. Thanks. Thanks here. I'd like to talk about coming back this year, what you're excited about. We were, uh, we were able to get out and mingle. Uh, and certainly the downtown Main Street Area Association has uh, good plans in place and uh, we're happy to be part of it. We're, we're glad that the merchants are allowing us to bring some cars down into their usual social district seating area. And uh, we hope to put on a Put on a nice show for a Friday afternoon evening. The yeah. street closures are, closures are no big deal this year because every weekend, every Thursday through Sunday, the streets are closed anyways. Yeah, that's a, it's a pretty big change. Uh, I, I think it's probably good, actually, because one thing we're always concerned about, obviously, is the safety of you know not only the folks that are bringing their cars to show, but the pedestrians walking around. And I think to the extent that we can control um, normal traffic is, is a good thing. It's, it's a good thing for all of us. I will say, as someone just like a visitor of the downtown in general, I think it's, I agree with you. I think having Main Street and those other side streets closed on the weekends is beneficial to everybody. I don't feel like I'm missing out on anything by not being able to drive my car down the main strip because it's really more for walking. And when you have kids like I do, it's, like you can go out to eat or go to an event and you don't have to worry about them being in the street. They can play in the street even. It's fun. Well, you know, it's, it's one of my favorite times in the past to, to go down and have lunch downtown is the day before art fair when setup is going on. There's no traffic. It's quiet. It's peaceful. You know, even in, in the in the days before the pandemic, you go downtown on a on an evening, there's cars, there's exhaust, there's noise. And I think the the peace and quiet of not having cars down there, I mean, this is kind of ironic. Here we are putting on a car show and this is the car culture and we're talking about having no cars. But I think there's something to be said for downtown Ann Arbor kind of emulating kind of a European cosmopolitan cafe idea. And Ann Arbor's a, a pretty cosmopolitan city and I think it's I think it speaks well for the city I think it's a I think it's a good vibe good good energy for the city yeah it's, I, I, what I've noticed you know Ben just to tag on to that is it's sort of become a social hub for people um, both in in town and out of town it's it's become a a, a place a nexus for friends and family to meet up and uh, you know wh whether they share a passion for the car hobby like many of us do or not um, it's, a, it's a great show that's going on in the background. And uh, it's, it's people are always asking me, my friends are always asking me, Jeff, when's the car show? And they're, and they're not really car people per se. You know, it's like, when's the car show? Where are you going to be? We want to meet up. And uh, I think that's just, it's great for downtown Ann Arbor. You don't have to be a car show person to enjoy the car show because there's just so much 
amazing cars to see, shocking cars to see. It's not like you're, you need someone to rev their engine for you. It's really about that artistry of those vehicles. Owners, you know, Bob and Mary Elton coined the term rolling sculpture car show. And uh, it really is about the beauty uh, of, of the vehicle and, and celebrating that beauty and all it means. Yeah, we usually have um, in excess of 200 vehicles. And, uh, and you know, we, we know exactly how many vehicles we can accommodate. And we watch that very carefully to make sure everybody has a, a spot to park. But um, I would anticipate, like Ben said, uh, we have a, a good complement of vehicles. It's great cross-section of vehicles. I mean, we've all been looking at the, the registrations coming in and uh, it's, it's gonna be really cool. And uh, any kind of vehicle you can possibly imagine is gonna be there. The weather is not great. Obviously, some people don't want to bring their cars out. So if you lost those numbers, would you allow people to sort of register at the event or does that not happen anymore? That doesn't happen anymore. We used to do day of show registration and uh, uh, it was always it was always a pretty much of a hassle. Uh, our registrar. Um, Mary LaDuke does a wonderful job. And just as the show went on and we looked at various aspects of it, uh, we realized that day of show registration, while it's it's great for the last minute, it really is a headache in terms of allowing people into the show. It's just, it wasn't worth the hassle. Uh, the, we were able, to, were able to keep a much better handle on sanity with uh, not having day of show sure. entries. Yeah. yeah, I think... Uh, like Ben's saying, I, I think what we noticed as the organizers is everybody just kind of calmed down when we started to do the just pre-registration. You know, the, the car owners were much more relaxed. There, there wasn't all the anxiety that oftentimes we faced. And, and we did want to make sure that everybody that wanted to come to the show had a place to park in the downtown venue. And the only way we could really do that is to know exactly who was coming and how many. And it, I think it's worked out better for everybody. Yeah, I think there's, there's, as Jeff mentions, there's a, there's a greater degree of calmness in the show in general, both in terms of prior to the show, getting people registered and handling all the administrative aspects of it, and the actual entry to the show. Uh, it's, it's, it's a lot more, it's a lot more manageable. It's a lot more sane. This yeah. year's show no is uh, what, a week later than we would have typically seen it in the past. I think it's about the same time. I think the calendar shifted a little bit. We're usually the week before Art Fair, which is the case this year. Uh, so I think we're pretty much on the same schedule. Uh, it seems a little bit later, but I think that's just due to a calendar shift. Uh, while I have a moment, speaking of this year's show after a two-year hiatus, I would like to welcome our new title sponsors uh, for the car show, uh, BMW of Ann Arbor and Mercedes of Ann Arbor. Uh, they're occupying the, the title sponsor roles now and uh, we're glad to have them. So uh, come on down and, and thank them as well for, for helping us put this on. So when is the date and what is the time frame of the 2022 Rolling Sculpture? It's Friday, July 15th from two until 10 p.m. So you got a big chunk of the day. A lot. I've, I had a tendency to always go after work on, uh, and it was really nice in the evening. I always enjoyed that sort of evening spot. But I think, yeah, that's, it's a nice to have that long day for people to choose from. And then even maybe get some food or anything. Are you going to have vendors or is it just uh, restaurant reliant? For those that can uh, actually get downtown, and I'm not going to recommend that anybody skips work. But uh, <laughs> it is quite entertaining to watch our volunteers parking the cars. And as long as pedestrians are, you know, staying on the sidewalks in a safe place, uh, you know, we park over 200 cars in about 40 minutes, which is, it's a pretty epic thing to watch. And uh, I'd like to say it's, it's all very controlled. We, we work really hard at that. And, and this year, for whatever reason, I, I think there are probably a couple of reasons, we have more volunteers than we've ever had in the past. So uh, to me, as, as a volunteer coordinator, that's, that's very exciting. I was curious. I've never seen the cars be put in place on the drag, so I wasn't sure how it happened. I wasn't sure if the car owners were driving their cars, but they're all parked a very specific way. 
So yeah, that is an interesting little tidbit to sort of get to see it for yourself even. Yeah, the car owners, they all bring their own cars in. And uh, the first thing they usually see once they enter the venue is me with a flag and a clipboard <laughs> pointing and waving. And uh, what we do is to ensure the right uh, pattern is set is our volunteers who also have cars park their cars early and uh, we orient them to set the parking pattern, you know, whether it's angle or parallel parking. And that way, the vehicles that are coming in with the guidance of our volunteers know exactly where to go. And it just makes everything very fluid, very seamless, and, uh, and very relaxed. Out of curiosity, because you are the volunteer coordinator, uh, do the volunteers have other jobs to do at the Rolling Sculpture Car Show? But we're, we're, we're pretty much split between those that are working with me on the streets to get the cars parked appropriately and spaced and, and all of that. And then we have another cohort um, working kind of ahead of me, and uh, that's the registration area. So cars start queuing up at around noon and uh, kind of in a holding pen kind of a situation. And that gives our registration organizer a chance to log pe people in we know who's there. Um, lots of cars that come, the, their owners belong to clubs or are coming in you know, with friends, you know, four or five other friends. And we try really hard to park them together just to maximize the, their enjoyment of the show. One of the things, all, all the volunteers for the show will be wearing yellow shirts, yellow t-shirts. And I think uh, certainly parking the cars is a primary function, but also, uh, helping spectators and, you know, answering spectators questions. Right. Uh, anybody who has a question, just find somebody with a yellow shirt and ask them. And if, if a, a volunteer doesn't know, they'll refer it to the next person who eventually gets the question to, to Jeff or me or to Sandra Andrade from the Main Street Area Association, and we'll get them an answer. Why do you guys feel like this is a fun event for not just the adults, but to bring the kids and the whole family out? Cars are part of our culture. You know, we, we, we grew up with them. Uh, I, uh, I grew up in the North Detroit area, and I was actually a participant in driving Woodward before it became the Dream Cruise. I was, uh, I was at some of the back, back in the day, if you will. And it, it's, it's part of our culture. It's part of our heritage. You know, certainly on a, on a Southeast Michigan basis and, and on a global basis as well. And I think it's just, you know, we all, we all interact with cars and getting, getting families together to look at it, appreciate it, uh, enjoy the culture is, and enjoy the community, I think is, is, it's, it's good. It's good for the community. Yeah, I think it's, uh, it's always heartening to see, uh, you know, younger children or, or even teens, you know, walk up, point, point at some vehicle, eyes wide open, especially if they're younger, pulling their, you know, their, their mom and dad over. And uh, I see a lot of kids kind of leading their parents through the show, which is really cool. And I, and I, and I think, you know, the cool factor, you know, I, I think transcends ages. You, you know, I, I think, you know, I, I, I tell my wife that it's the one day of the year where I end up talking so much. I almost lose my voice by the end of the day. And it's, it's not parking cars. It's just talking to people and answering questions. And it's, it's, it's a great kind of way to become exhausted, but it, it's, uh, but everybody I think recognizes cool. And uh, it's just, it's really heartwarming to watch, you know, all the, the community really appreciating the, the, the vehicles. The people own these cars, these cars are a labor of love for most of them. You know, they're either, restored by the car owner or they've put a lot of a lot of effort into having them restored and they're, they're proud of these cars and they, they love to talk about them as, as jeff says you know talk to any car owner and they'll they'll tell you the story they'll tell you the history uh families with children uh the general procedure at car shows is not to touch the cars but if you if, if you uh talk to a car owner uh and say ask your child or have your child ask the car, owner, can I sit in it? Oftentimes they'll say, sure, hop in, have a seat in the car. But it's polite to ask first, but most of them will are, are, are tickled to let kids do that. Yeah. 
Yeah, I really think going to car shows nowadays is like one of the places that you're really seeing these unique cars because I feel like we're in an era where when you get a new car, a lot of the new cars look very similar to each other. Like it, to, if it's a Chevy or a Ford or whatever, everyone's got like these crossover SUVs. You rarely even see new cars on the road. So like seeing, I think this nostalgia factor to these cars is amazing, but it also, yeah, it like brings you back to a time when you're like, oh man, my friend had that Mustang kind of thing. You know, it's there's something really neat about that. Yeah, and a lot, a lot of the car owners, will pop the hoods open. And uh, it's kind of fun to actually see a real engine, you know, <laughs> as opposed to a massive tubing and wires and sheets of plastic, you know, which frankly is not terribly exciting, at least not yeah. to me. But to actually open the hood, you know, and for a young person to look at what, what an engine used to be and, and really still is fundamentally, um, but just understanding what makes things work. I think it's just the pure fascination with mechanical things that uh, turns a, a lot of young people on. You guys get to see the kind of cars that are coming in based on registration or is there anything you're excited to see this year? We have a 1920s Liberty coming. So I, 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 I'm always really excited to see some of the really, really old vehicles come with, you know, spoke wheels made out of wood and, uh, you know, huffing and puffing and it's a miracle they even make it and I always think owners like that are the most courageous people in the world because I don't think I would have the courage to drive one of those downtown but I, I love seeing some of the the older vehicles frankly. I think I noticed a 32 Model T on the list mm -hmm. so that's 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 from a ways back. Yeah and even vintage pickup trucks. Uh, I know one of our committee members has got an awesome uh, I think it's a Studebaker if anybody remembers what that is, a Studebaker <laughs> pickup truck, which is super cool. And, and uh, because there, there are a lot of folks walking around that are really into trucks, you know, pickup trucks and that whole genre. And it's, 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 it's cool to get a lot of different kinds of vehicles like that as well. What sets this car show apart from others? Are there certain criteria that people have to follow or is it, you know, you take any car? How does it work? I think... I think it's the fact that there are no criteria. Uh, the way I like to phrase it, it's a, a bring what you got show. Uh, it's not a car club show. It's not a Camaro show. It's not a Corvette show. It's, it's whatever. It's, it's, we've had some pretty interesting cars there. There's there been a few rat rods, which are just rusty welded together hunks. Mm -hmm. We had uh, the dinosaur car, which was, uh, I forget what the model of the car was, but it was, it was had fins and scales and, all kinds of things glued on it. There was a, a computer car one year with the uh, circuit boards and computer chips glued all over the car. So it's whatever. And, you know, from the, from the exhibitors that I talk to, they say, you know, a number of them tell me they go to a lot of car shows and this is their favorite. Uh, and I think it's because of the diversity, the fact that there, there are no criteria. Yeah. I think if, uh, if, if your vehicle is cool to you, it's cool to us. And, and we don't judge. If, if it's your baby, then bring it. And uh, we'll, we'll help you, you celebrate, you know, and we don't, I think some, you know, some of the shows Ben was mentioning, you know, do a lot of kind of best in class and top three Corvettes and all this kind of thing. And we, we don't do that. I mean, we, there are awards and we have a really cool awards ceremony near our DJ, but uh, we, the awards are given by sponsors and it's more things like drove the farthest to get here or the busted knuckle award, which I won one year because I actually had a band aid on my knuckle, but uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's more about the celebration of the hobby and, you know, and what it took to get that vehicle, whatever it is actually to the show to show it. So we will still see the DJ and the awards this year. That's it's still in place. Right. Absolutely. Yep. Surfer Joe will be there. If you got a favorite cartoon, uh, hit him up. He'll, uh, he'll put you in the queue. Uh, the awards ceremony is at the corner of Maine and Liberty at 7 PM. So certainly show up for that. See who, who gets, who gets, uh, who gets an award. Uh, yep. We're business as usual after two year pause. It's, it's fun to get back to it. Are we going to see different car sections like, oh, here's the Corvettes or is everything just going to be mixed together? 
Well, it's the parking is completely random. And the exception being, say, like the Corbett Club, and uh, they are coming again. And, you know, and it, it makes our job a little bit easier if we know ahead of time where to put them, especially when there's a lot of them. We have to really kind of plan some of that ahead. But beyond that, it's, it's completely random. And, you know, I, and I tell car owners, there really is no bad parking place at the show. I mean, you're in downtown Ann Arbor, you're either on Main Street or the adjoining street. Most people park, put up a couple of chairs and then walk away and look for their friends. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so there's, there's really no bad parking spot and it is completely random. And, and which I always thought when I was coming, bring one of my cars, it's just a participant was always kind of cool. It was sort of the unexpected and just a, a little story. I ended up meeting a what, who is now a really good friend of mine, just because for two years in a row, we randomly ended up parking next to each other. And I'm like, my gosh, what are the odds we would end up <laughs> next to each other? And now that person this year has become a volunteer. So it's all kind of come full circle. I've spoken with exhibitors, you know, the, the, the current uh, uh, mindset is Main Street, got to park on Main Street, it got to be on Main Street. And I've talked with people in the past who have wanted to park on Main Street, have been adamant about it, said, well, sorry, we can't accommodate you. You need to park here. You need to park on Washington Street or you need to park on Liberty Street. And they grumble about it and then they park there. And I've spoken to them afterwards and they say, you know, I actually kind of like it down here. This is not a bad place to park at all. So, you know, it's just, it's getting people out of their routines, just moving them around a little bit. Once, 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 once they get the nudge, they're like, they're, they're pretty okay with it, I think. Right. And I think as a spectator, you end up walking the whole car show. It's not that big of an area, really. It's you want to see it all. Sure. Yep. Yeah. Come come early evening. Uh, it's it's packed with people, and it doesn't really like Ben said. It doesn't really matter where your car is parked. You'll be swarmed with people and spectators and folks asking you about your vehicle, and it's 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 a great time. Uh, are either of you bringing a car this year? I am. So what can we expect, yep. Jeff? So, well, I will be bringing our 1969 Triumph GT6 Plus. It's uh, an English car, obviously built in 1969. And uh, the Triumph Com Company is no longer making cars. They haven't made a car for decades, which kind of makes it special. And it's, it's a very small car. And uh, it, it's got, got what we call in, in the hobby meatballs on the doors. So it's got racing numbers on, on the doors number 69. And uh, I'll be parked uh, somewhere. So it won't be hard to find. It's bright red. I'll be happy to chat with you about it. I assume you park your engine. own car? <laughs> you park your own car there? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Well, we're almost out of time before we go. Just tell people why each of you think that they should check out this car show this year, the 2022. It's been two years off. Why we should really get out of our houses and go to the Rolling Sculpture Car Show this year. Get out. Get outside. Do something. Go downtown. Uh, mix and mingle a little bit. Enjoy, enjoy Ann Arbor downtown in the summertime and come see some cool cars. Yeah, call a friend. Meet them down the corner of uh, Maine and Washington or anywhere. And, you know, patronize the restaurants. They'll, they'll all be open. And uh, it's, it's a great restaurant night. It's a great place to socialize. You can walk around and look at the cars and then find a place to sit. And uh, I, I would encourage, like Ben said, uh, you know, get outdoors. Come on downtown. Rain or shine. I'm not going to promise it's going to be sunny. But <laughs> regardless of the weather, it will be an awesome time. Well, thank you both for coming on the show. My pleasure. Thanks for having us. For more on this and other programs, visit a2gov.org slash ctn. Visit youtube.com slash ctn Ann Arbor to see all that we have to offer. And remember to like, subscribe, and ring that notification. Thanks for watching and tune in next time to FYI. Mm -hmm.